So New Canaan High School Library is thinking of developing a makerspace. You might have noticed last week that the upper level of the library was quite empty, but we still had really big crowds. Our principal, Mr. Egan, suggested that we get a makerspace. So you might be wondering what a makerspace is. Here's an example of one in New Jersey. Have you ever thought the school library was boring? We'll talk to the kids at a New Jersey high school. CBS 2's Cindy Shu takes us to New Milford to find out what all the buzz is all about. Welcome to the library at New Milford High School, where there's a lot more than books. This is the brand new Makerspace, and we do mean make. Kyle Henry is using a 3D printer to make a phone case. He designed it on the computer, then print it out. He made this black one the other day. You could change your color. You have blue, black, white, red, green, and basically comes out of a phone case in an hour or two. Other students are creating video game controllers out of anything, even fruit. Tristan Tiangson let me play along. I never played a video game with fruit. It's it very, uh, it, a very interesting game. <laughs> I think we broke it. <laughs> Students can visit the makerspace anytime they want. Pamela Yashu built her own computer last month and loves taking them apart in the take apart station. This is a motherboard. Everything connects to this. Uh, this is a CPU, does calculations for the computer. This is a heat sink, which cools off the CPU. And the list goes on. The makerspace was created this school year by Laura Fleming, who runs the library, and says it's all about making learning fun and inspiring innovation. I've had kids go home and learn about things that they started in our maker space. And to me, that's, that's, you know, a teacher's dream. And it has students dreaming big. Now I want to do biomedical engineering, so hopefully I'll get into that. And Makerspace has helped you feel that way? Yeah, it has a lot. It shows us all the different ways to build things, and it takes you through step by step. While the students love the Makerspace, next year it's going to look completely different. They want to keep changing it up to keep it new and relevant. In New Milford, New Jersey, Cindy Shu, CBS 2 News. We want this to be an organic process that is really student-generated and student-centered. Since students are going to be doing most of the learning in the makerspace, it's important that they really have a say in how it develops. So that's why the makerspace doesn't look like a makerspace at all right now. We are waiting for students to fill out the survey so they can tell us what their needs are. So why create a makerspace? It's really a place where learners don't just solve problems, they find them. The first thing, the first problem was seating. But we solved that. We had the district donated some tables from a different school in the system and we found some stools and storage so we're all set with seating now. The next challenge we face is that our tabletops are in terrible condition. We want to make sure that we have attractive space to work in so we want to involve you in rehabilitating these tables and we want this to be our first makerspace project. So we looked at contact paper to cover the tables. It would cost about $300 and it would last, my guess, is less than three weeks. Um, another option is maybe we could ask the woodworking classes to create new tabletops and we could fund that through the Makerspace budget. Or we could create artwork and then place plexiglass over that. Or maybe use whiteboard paint, but I, I have concerns that that might chip or be hard to make it adhere to the surface. Same with chalkboard paint. And of course, in a dream world, maybe screens. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, we've thought of a few other things since then, but we have a very limited budget for this project. So let's stretch our imaginations and see if we can find a solution. Here's another problem. These are really terrible. Nobody wants to reach into these to be able to actually plug in their electronic devices, and yet we do have outlet ports all over the floors in the library. So here is our second makerspace challenge. We need charging stations, but they cost in the thousands. Literally, these, the, that one on the right there, that can cost as much as, I think, $2,500. So we have tools to be able to create our own charging stations. So maybe we can be creative about how to Take what we've got and maybe supplement it with a few other things and create our own charging stations here in the library. So those are just two things we thought about. Um, we have purchased a couple of items for our makerspace. Um, these are what we have so far. Um, we think we will need much, much more. But like we said, we really wanted your involvement in, in, in all of these conversations. So we're on hold. We're waiting for you. Here are a few other ideas. 
And many maker spaces have a 3D printer. Um, MakerBot is a popular brand, but we have a senior who's managed spent a fair amount of time trying to problem solve and troubleshoot with a MakerBot printer, and he says it's not so great. So if we were to get one, how would we use it? That's the first big question we have. And the second question we have is, what kind should we get? Um, so we have an Amazon cart just waiting for your suggestions. Uh, and we want to hear from you. So if you scan this QR code or you go to bit.ly slash NCHS Makerspace, you can find a survey and you can start giving us your feedback.